This video will demonstrate how to make a male foam mold that was used to create one of these shell units for the fiber wave pavilion. Here we see the full scale shell unit. We're going to look at making this male foam mold at a smaller scale around 10.5 by 7. The two RhinoCam processes that we're going to look at are horizontal finishing and parallel finishing. And we're going to start off with parallel finishing. And here you see a wood mold that was used to make the smaller scale panels. And the first pass or tooling pass that we're going to use is what I consider a roughing pass or a pseudo roughing pass. And here you can see these vertical lines that are milled into the mold that was used making the parallel finishing so if you can imagine some Z planes coming out of this wood parallel to each other that's the path that the tool on the three axis router followed to mill away some of this wood so this roughing pass gets down there and clears away a lot of this material for us whether it's wood or foam and then we come back with a finishing pass with it, which is horizontal finishing which starts from the center here and spirals its way down until it reaches this plateau. It ignores this plateau because it's a flat plane so there's nothing to go down horizontally on. And here's a photo of the small scale mill small scale mill foam mold um, that we're actually going to take a look at setting up the machining pass for. So here in Rhino we have the 3D model set up and as I mentioned this is about 10 and a half inches by 7 inches and it's 2 inches tall. So you see I've set up the geometry really the bounding box geometry for this piece so that Rhino Cam can find our stock. <clears throat> so the first thing we want to look at is what, what type of machine are we using? We're using a three-axis machine. What post should be what post should we be using? It should be specific to our machine. And we're using a pre-6 CNC router. So I'm going to go ahead and change this post just by double-clicking on it. And it's important that your post file is inside a folder. You don't want to put these post files on the desktop because RhinoCam won't find them. So they have to be in a folder. So this is in a folder that I've called posts. And you see here it's my flash cut pre six and it's set up for inch. The next thing I want to do is set up my stock and I can do this just by double clicking and you'll see in the Rhino viewport it creates this yellow bounding box stock. The dimensions of it are 10 and a half by 7 by 2 inches high. I'm going to set the X, Y, and Z. I'm going to set that to 0, 0, 0. Now if we look at this diagram here it's important to note that that's the lower corner of the stock. And that's right here. In this example I'm going to be when I go to mill this at the CNC machine, I'm going to use the top of the bed to be 0, 0, 0, or the Z to be 0, versus the top of stock. Because I'm going to have to put this stock back on the CNC machine, and the CNC machine, if I use the top of the stock, that's going to be milled away, so that stock is no longer going to exist. So that's why I'm using the top of the bed for 0, Z. Okay, so under setup, I'm going to go ahead and set up my machining operation to be a three axis. And we're going to use parallel finishing. I mentioned this is going to be our pseudo roughing pass. Now, I had one of the rectangles selected as a drive region. I don't want to have any drive regions in this, so I can, I can remove all. So don't select anything that's important before you go into the parallel finishing dialog box. And if you did, you can do as I did, 
can go ahead and remove all. It's going to find the 3D geometry for us, so we don't need anything here. So I'm just going to go from left to right through these tabs. The next tab is our tool, and we're going to edit, create, select tool. The default type of tool is a ball mill, and that's what we're going to use in this case. We're going to use a ball mill. We're going to be working with 3D surfaces in foam. And our ball mill is going to be a 3 8 inch diameter. And it's 0.375 inch in decimal. And I need to know the decimal equivalent because that's what I need to enter into these boxes. So the first thing I'll enter in is the tool diameter. That's 0.375. Three I don't need the inches because my drawing is set up for the, its units equal to inches. The tool length is 4 inches. The shoulder length, if we look at this diagram here, on our particular end mill is 3.5 inches. And our flute length, the actual cutting area of the end mill, is 3 inches. Our shank diameter, that defaulted to our tool diameter, so that's fine. I'm not worried about the holder diameter or the holder length. I do, however, want to set my feeds and speeds here at the tool dialog box. So my, speeds, my speed is going to be 12,000 12, rotations per minute. And my feed rates, this is in inches per minute since my file is set up in inches. I'm going to plunge approach in a gauge a little bit slower than I cut. So I'm going to do this at 150 inches per minute for all three of those, plunge, approach, engage. Then I'm going to go a little faster once I'm in the material and I start cutting. I'm going to increase that to 300 for the cut, the retract, and the departure. Okay, I can click on Save Edits the Tool. Click OK from this dialog box. You see here my ball mill 3 8 shows up. I do want to check now. I want to just keep going from left to the right to the next tab. So feeds and speeds, that's 12,000. All of those values that I entered showed up. So now I can go to my next tab in the upper left, which is clearance plane. And this is, the clearance plane is when the, the end mill of the CNC is moving around after it's made cuts or in between cuts. That's how high it's going to be above our stock or our part. So I want to I want to actually put this absolute Z value in myself. Now we can see that clearance plane that would be bad. It's below the geometry. I'm just going to click the up arrow to raise this up just above the geometry. Just get it as tight as possible. This will save me some some time when when we're actually milling this piece out. We'll go a little lower than that. And that's too low because it's hitting the top of that part. So about right there. So that's going to be my clearance plane. The next thing I want to look up look at setting up is my cut parameters. So this is a roughing pass. What that means is it's not going to mill the foam all the way down to this geometry in this piece. It's not going to go all the way down because it's a roughing pass. I want to leave some stock and then my finishing path, my finishing pass will take away the rest of that material. So I'm going to leave a very small amount of material, about three 128 inches. So in decimals, that's 0.02 I'm going to leave for my stock. The next thing I want to look at is my step over control. And if we go back to this photo that I had up earlier, so the step over, you can see it's quite large on this mold. You see that probably about every little less than three eighths of an inch that these step over. So I can control my step over. Um, I'm going to use 25%, but I like to put in values there because then if I want to increase or decrease my step over, I can come back to this file 
and I can see my distance that I'm using. So I'm going to have a step over of about 330 seconds. So not quite as much as what we saw in that photo. So the decimal for 330 seconds is point zero nine three seven five. Okay, that's the cut parameters. I'm going to go over now to my Z containment. And I'm going to insert multiple step downs. So I'm not going to just blaze into this and cut all the way down to this bottom plateau here. I'm going to have it step down basically three times by using a distance of 0.5 inches. And that's that's the distance from, or I should say the distance from this point to this point uh, is, is one and a half inches. So if I step down every 0.5 inches, it's going to step down three times to finish the tooling path. And we'll see that a little bit better in the display in a second here. The entry and exit, we're going to leave that as the defaults and I'm going to go ahead and click on generate okay so it's generated a tool path for me we don't see it because the tool tooling path is actually turned off the tool path I can turn the tool path on and off by using the tool path visibility button here at the bottom so I turn that on and we can see the three different step down levels at half an inch apart that it's going to take and then you see the parallel lines, that's why it's called parallel finishing. If we go over to our simulate tab, and I'm going to turn off the tool path. We don't see anything right now, but if I right click and I choose simulate, we're going to actually see the CNC process happening virtually here in the screen. So you see the, the, the tool or the end mill is just going back and forth parallel to each other. So you see this looks very similar to the photo that I showed you except for the area where the actual shell panel is. This is what I need to really finish off and make it a lot smoother than this and I can do this with horizontal finishing because it's going to spiral down on this geometry and it's going to be a lot faster and a lot smoother than the parallel finishing would be. So let's go ahead and set that up but before we do I'm going to rename this because it's not my roughing, or rather it's not my finishing, it's my roughing. So I'm going to change this to roughing. And I'm going to go back to the program tab. And I'm going to add the machining operation under three axis. And it's going to be a horizontal finishing. So none of my regions are selected. That's exactly the way I want it. My tool has already been set up for us. We did that on the last machining. Feeds and speeds are set up. Our clearance plane can be the same. Our cut parameters. Now, on our, on our parallel roughing pass, we left some stock. We left .02 that's what we're going to be machining away in the finishing. We had to leave something there to actually make this finishing path. So we left 0 0.02. Now we set this to zero. I don't want to put anything in here. For cut levels, it wants our step down. So we're going to step down, in this case, 25%. But I'm going to go ahead once more and choose the distance that I want to step down which is about 330 seconds of an inch. And if I choose 
later on to redo this with better resolution or less resolution I now have a value to start with and I can raise or lower that value next is the optimized machining I'm gonna check on optimized XY machining we're gonna use a distance here this time less than 25 percent we're gonna use about 20 percent so a little closer for the step over so 0 0.075 our entry and exit will be the default and I can go ahead and generate this now in the setup it's important to have these in the order that you're going to be machining them so I want to do my roughing first and my finishing second so I'm going to drag I'm going to drag my finishing under my roughing and when I go over to simulate nothing's there if I click on parallel roughing I can see that because we've already done that we've already simulated that now let's go ahead and simulate our horizontal finishing I'm gonna go ahead and right click and choose simulate and you see it's starting from the center and it's spiraling its way out every about five sixty fourths of an inch is the distance between these lines and then it's working its way down because it's horizontal finishing it's spiraling its way down about every three thirty seconds of an inch and it will ignore this plateau once it gets to that plateau because that's one flat plane it'll stop okay so there you see the finished result uh, in this case of what the male foam mold will look like the other thing I want to show you is under preferences under this gear I have my simulation preferences I have the simulation accuracy set to fine so I know that's not the default so you might not be getting those exact exact results so you want to change the simulation preference preferences to fine okay so I have both of these I could post this as one file but I prefer to post these separately in case something happens between the operations on the CNC machine or if I want to do one and take a look at it before I do the other one so I would post each of these individually so you see the difference here here's here's my roughing here's my finishing so to post you would just right click and choose post and browse for the folder and save it there so you do that for parallel roughing in this case and then you would go ahead and do it again for parallel finishing alright that's it